came they came through do 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 on the drive by side, pulled down the street, jumped out the car, ran back down the street to where everybody was at. It was on the ground. Some a couple of them on the ground still shooting at them. You feel me? They ran back up on everybody that was there and 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 assassinated. They ain't kill them. They assassinated, assassinated everybody. Everybody that was out there still laying on the ground. They made sure everybody was dead, bro. I'm talking about one, one one switch guns with somebody. Man, finish him. Yeah, man. man, Swiss guns. Get his gun. Somebody took his gun and kept blowing. I see. Listen, yeah, blowing, hey. blowing tops off, man. They hats is flying off their head. You feel me? I'm talking about you can see the do, 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 do. Like, man, this is like, I be looking at this. Like, wow, man. Getting money every day, that's my main mission. If you want it, then you might miss it. Little cuz in the drop with them brains missing. 2 2 18, we the key. Welcome to the show. We're your host, and you are now in the trenches. Tonight, we got a special guest, you feel me? And, you know, people talk about being in the trenches, you know what I'm saying? A lot of rappers say they're in the trenches, but this guy right here really be in the trenches, man. You know what I'm saying? We want to welcome to the show, Newer Detroit Zeke, man. What's going on? What's up, bro? You all right? Yeah, love, for sure. Love. Appreciate you having me, man. Yeah, for sure, man. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to really do this for a minute, get this interview with you. Yeah. Because it's, you know, people need to open their eyes up, man, and really see what's going on. You feel me? But before we get into that, I want to, uh, you know, ask ask the people, can you give them a background on yourself? You feel me? Where you from? How you grew up? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. What up, though? What up, though? So I'm Zeke, um, president and founder of New Era Detroit, New Era Nation, New Era World. Um, <clears throat> for us, for the people that know us, we accountability organization, community organization. Um, you know, started here in the city of Detroit. You know, our our big thing um, is making sure that we bring back uh, a level of uh, a day to day organization, treating organization like a lifestyle. You feel me? So, you know, just as we do everything else and incorporate everything else, we can't be put in a position no more to say, "Well, I ain't got the time to do this." Right? You know, and the streets hurting. You know, we got to be able to put ourselves in a position to say, "I'm gonna put some time and some equity." You know, towards the growth and development of where our babies growing up. Yeah, at, for you sure. Feel me? So, um, for us, is making sure that we got programs, initiatives. You know, making sure that we stick to the to the basics, man. Like the ethics, code, moral, right. respect. So, so tell me, what sparked that in you, though? Like, what age did that come in you to where you like, man? This man, something got to change. You feel me? It wasn't really like no. It wasn't really like a. Uh, uh, I feel like it was more towards, you know, the end part of my 20s, man, when I when I would put myself in a position to turn around. And I had a great, you know, uh, early, early time being in the trees, running right. around, just doing that, you know, young black men do. I was able to, you know, do different things to move around. And, you know, I've always had a, a, a mindset and mentality of whatever it is that I was doing, I would put my all into. I don't care what. Whatever it was, so you know, for me, having that understanding and just looking around, you know, feeling an empty void, bro. You yeah, feel me? Sure. Like at the end of the day, we sitting around this month. I remember looking on, um, you know, looking on TV, man, and the news came on one day, and it was just like, you know, a woman being raped oh, out yeah. in the street, right? And I think I was like at a bar or something, and um. It just flashed up there, and I looked at all the brothers around like nobody gave. A fuck. You feel me? You no know, p- people can care less about this woman or women because it was a serial rapist. It wasn't just you know it was a serial rapist that was just out raping women. And I, I don't mean like, to cut you off, but this was around two thousand eight, nine. No, no, this what? was this wasn't wasn't that early. No, I oh, started okay. this organization in twenty fourteen. Oh, okay. So two thousand eight, nine. 
Um, yeah, but I remember yeah. when there was a, a rash, yeah, the, like a lot of rapes going on, especially in this area. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. it was guys pulling females in garages, killing them and raping them. No, not just raping them. You yeah. Feel? Yeah. So I felt the same way, but I was like, man, who the hell gonna listen to me? You feel me? Yeah. That's yeah. how I felt. So, man, I feel that same spirit that you got, like, somebody got to get up and do something. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just, you know, like, it, it, it wasn't just one of those, and put, being put in one of those, those positions to where, you know, I really had to look at myself as a man and identify, yeah. like, what what is it? You know, what's our purpose? You feel me? If, if we looking at, you know, the way that, that the streets is being, you know, the direction that the streets is going and everything that's going on in our communities. You know, how we calling ourselves men, bro, and kids is being shot and killed, bro. You right. feel me? How we calling ourselves men when women is being snatched up off the street. And I don't care how much money I was getting, how satisfied I was I was in and the position of where, you know, my businesses and different businesses endeavors and just figuring out life I could be like everybody else. You feel me? Right, but it's just sure. like at the end of the day, you know, who who's speaking out for the streets, bro? You know, who who's who's speaking out for, you know, the, these babies like Black Lives Matter, you will see, you know, they, they only come out when the police is involved. For you sure. Feel me? Yeah. Like who's speaking out, you know, f for the streets. And it's just like the, the voices is, is never being heard or represented or, you know, enforced. So, you know, for us, it was just like, you know, we want to make sure that we put ourselves in a position to, to to let you know, the people be heard and understood and I just know somebody got your back at all times. Right, right. So, was the church situation the first, like the first time, you know, you had an encounter with somebody doing a community wrong or something like that? No, nah, that came way later. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, a church, uh, a church incident um, or demonstration. Um, I yeah, but say. Ne let's not get it, you know, f***ed up though. Yeah. Uh, it bogus though. Like yeah. when I seen it, I was like, "Rev got the the ATM in the church." You mm -hmm. feel me? Like what, what? What type of time you on, man? And for the people that was in the church to protect them, okay, he been getting y'all money for so many years. You know what I'm saying? So I respect for them to say that. But what is you doing for the people on the outside of the church? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, so, just, it's a level of accountability, and not just, um, you know in regards to him and the money that he getting. I don't know if you're familiar with um, Dow's Go-Kart. Yeah, yeah. Dow's so. Go-Kart, it, it sits directly behind um, Great Faith Ministry. Uh, and it's the only spot in the city. They've been around for years, like years. Um, but that, it's the only spot in the city. It's the only Go-Kart yeah, spot in the city. It's a black-owned Go-Kart spot. You know, black couple, old black, older black couple that been entrenched over there in that community for decades and um it was a situation with them um and the stories that they told me about the things that you know they did to them mm. um was really one of our biggest catalysts it's just like you know you're gonna pull up in you know double or whatever you driving and you know you got a a, a, a black on go-kart spot right here i mean the least you can do instead of causing friction is build with them you feel right, me like sure. You know, we getting X amount of dollars. Why don't we sponsor y'all some new go-karts? The go-karts is, you know, they doing what they can. You know, they basically surviving how they survive. And then the people over there in the community, the, an the annual household income over there in that community, you know, somewhere around $10,000 a year. You know what I mean? It just, you know, what's the purpose and point? And, and the thing is, it's accountability. You feel yeah, me? So sure. it's just like, you know... We have to be able to put ourselves in a position to say, okay, if these are the words that you are preaching and the stuff that's coming out your mouth, you know, you need to be held accountable, you know, for doing more for the people, you know, in the communities that you live in. That's 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 very important. Yeah, yeah, I believe that also. But that wasn't the first thing. <laughs> no, nah, man, we uh, we been getting it in, man. When we first started, um, it was a huge culture in the city, man, with gas stations and liquor stores. Um, you know, the amount of uh, disrespect, you know, that they would give to us, you know, the way that, that, that they would talk um, to our sisters in the stores, the, you know, the way that they would deal and do business with, with our kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, yeah. that's where we really, you know, got started at. Uh, we had shut down. Uh, um, our first shutdown was a shutdown on a demonstration, I should, I should say, 
uh, was on Eight Mile in Southfield, um, and the clerk pulled the gun out on on some kids, and they was like, "We done went everywhere." You feel me? We went to the police. We done went, you know, to the news. We done went everywhere, and they like, "Won't nobody, you know, ain't nobody taking this serious." So you know, we went up there, we demonstrated. You know what I mean? In a way, because I, I I say I never did a protest or a rally in March. We yeah. don't do none of that shit, bro. We demonstrate. You right, feel me? It ain't sure. nothing to pick it. There ain't no picket signs about it, bro. If it's a problem, we, we go in the store. Everybody got to leave. You feel me? We got to, until we figure the situation out. And that's the way that we got to be in our community in order for others to respect us. We got to put a level of respect for ourselves to say that this is, this is that's where code come from. You right. feel me? We not on code. We don't have a code. We not living by a code. You know the rest of these the rest of these cultures they on code. You feel me? They come in, they get their bag. You feel me? Even all the way down to medical marijuana. Be ashamed and embarrassed. If you've been if you've been in the business for decades prior to this, and you've been selling and growing out these same you know uh, uh, neighborhoods, and then we got these people who come in. Once again, just like they did with the liquor stores and gas station, and then buy up all like they 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 done set up shop on every corner in the hood, and that's just acceptable to this. Right. Like, what other community could you go to? What other race of people would let you in their hood set up shops in their hood to sell to their kids? Yeah, they kill you, especially in other countries. You wouldn't dare get away with that. <laughs> You feel me? So you it's about it's way. about respect, bro. But we gotta be able to stand up and grab our necks. We all everybody wanna be tough on that don't mean nothing. You feel me? Like sure. we gotta put ourselves in a position to say, you know, I, I don't like nothing about what's going on with the with the uh, marijuana and dispensary business in the city of Detroit. Um, I feel like every person that has that's on file that's either incarcerated due to marijuana or a record is affected due to marijuana should. Should um they record should be wiped clean immediately, yeah. immediately. I mean immediately. The day that y'all set up shops in our hood, the same hoods that people went to jail for, bro, got records, got little BS on their records. Now they can't conceal carrying. It's just a lot to that. It's the risk, but that goes back to respect. You know what type of respect do we have for ourselves to set a standard in our hood? To, to dictate the business and the things that go on in our communities yeah. from from that so you got that aspect of the economics and then you got you know uh uh we killing kids and allowing that you know don't nobody want to gang bang on that that shot the kid in the head and killed the killed the babies right. don't nobody want to uh, cause a, a national rally for all the kids that get killed in Detroit Chicago and all the rest of these black cities nobody cares and it's, and and but everybody's gangster. Right. But it was a call to where it wasn't to, nothing really happening to kids back in the time I know when we came up. Yeah. It was rarely you seen uh, a little kid got shot. Yeah. This happened to a kid. Because it was, it was a call everybody went back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially, in the, I think the community was more tighter back then. I just think the internet came and just... The internet, yeah. yeah big problem. Yeah. It, just, mm. it fucked up everything. Yeah. Especially for our culture because now you got... It's just crazy. Everybody's smoking on something. Everybody just dr Drugs, want yeah, attention. Mm -hmm. It's all for likes, man. Yeah. Yeah, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's crazy, man. So it's, it's just, you know, finding... Being able to establish what, you know, reality is in a fictional world. You feel me? So, yeah. you know, but that's on us, man. Reality is what we deal with every single day, man. You know, when we walk out here, where we at, you know, in our environment, that's reality. And, you know, because we don't face it or, you know, put it in the back burner or don't think it's important is the reason that our reality ain't the best reality and haven't been. Right, for sure. Correct. You got something? Yeah, just from listening, man, I wanted to know just offhand, uh, what impact has the city of Detroit had, like, supporting the movement or going against you? Like, what stance have they taken with you? Uh, so, you know, we always been the problem child to the D since we done, um, you know, since we stepped in, um, you know, we were a different look, like nobody haven't seen nothing like what we were doing in our area and the, the manner that we were doing it. Um, so, like I said, you know, when, when we would have issues with certain establishments and, um, you know, the way that we would be boldly, you know, we, we just stood on what we said, you know what I mean? And, and 
you didn't see that. Like, even when it comes to uh, a lot of the leadership, the elder leadership, you know, people would just go with the flow. They'd get out here, jump on camera, say a little speech, and then that'd be it. It wouldn't be no accountability. It'd be picket signs. We going to march. You know, we going to politely ask. And that's and that'd be what it is. You know, for us, you know, we, we never say a protest. We say a demonstration, you know. Um, so for us, it, it was about... And it still is about being able to, you know, uh, make sure that people understand that there is a level of respect for us and our people. And it can't be it can't be bought, you know, and it can't be something that, um, you know, we're going to take lightly. So as far as uh, the establishment, we never had a relationship with the mayor. As soon as we started, you know, we got word from him. The last thing we need in this city right now is a black a black power group, you know, and it's just been on since then with with them down the city hall. Um, you know, we had a a, a very rough patch uh, with the Detroit Police Department, um, especially in 2016. It was a lot of back and forth um, between us and them because you know we had to stand our ground on that too. You feel me? Like we took a, a lot of hits, but you know we had to 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 make sure that people understood like we when we talk about we ain't fearing nobody it's from you know politicians it's from the police it's from niggas in the street it's the same <laughs> thing I mean it's across the board when it comes to it so you know for us the people who really is is real people and understand like you know what we doing and, and, and the need for what we doing we get along with great but you know the truth is you know the establishment never like people like me because it's getting our people to think and move a different type of way opposed to what's on display. I can't be out here telling people to organize in their community and understand that, you know, we got to get back to a code of respect, code and morals. You know, it's a big economic base around our ignorance. Um, once again, there's no race of people who's going to allow the amount of businesses that are not a part of that community to come in and make all the money, all the money, all of it. You feel me? Like we got our uh, um, black people, and I will say this in Detroit, we are seeing a lot of, um, we seeing more black entrepreneurs um, and more black people opening up businesses. And yeah, I salute sure. this era of my brothers and sisters um, you, because we are putting a dent in that. Uh, but for the most part, that's it is what it is. We we are one of the largest populated black cities in the country per capita. Um, you won't go nowhere in America and drive this many miles from east to west and see all of our culture. We a lot of people in Detroit don't understand how special we are. You can go from deep east to deep west and you still in the hood. You can drive hood to hood. These other hoods, I don't care. Midwest, you know, uh east coast. Uh, uh, West Coast down south They got their hoods And they got to drive 20 miles To the next hood You know Or the next hood It's all one city And it's such a unique place With such great black heritage uh, and, and, and history And I feel like we f***ing it up you, you know what I mean When you got brothers like Coleman Young To come in here And put his foot down Unapologetically You know In, in, in a 20 year span Completely turn You know uh, Turn and shift uh, of the city giving black people on all levels uh, um, a level of um, you know uh, a, a place you feel me something something that we can do we can build here we as a black city for that from there on and now we didn't do nothing with all of this time we wasn't holding it down we let these politicians come in and 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 and, and pimp us and siphon the resources and all the rest of that stuff and and look where we at now we are a, a predominantly black city with a predominantly black downtown with no resources. We done sold everything. We sold the water. Man. We sold Belal. We don't own shit. everything. River Riverfront, Riverwalk Conservancy. All of this is privately owned. The city of Detroit. I don't believe the city of Detroit own but the police department. And you know any city that you live in, where any city that you live in, a, a black city, any city that you live in where the number one employer uh, of a city is the city, that shows a huge problem too because they control just about all of the resources in the entire city. The city of Detroit is the number one uh, employer in the city. So it's, it's, 
for us, we got to be able to with, with all the people that we got, six hundred, roughly six hundred thousand people uh, in the city. You know, uh, uh, eighty, roughly eighty percent of that six hundred thousand is 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 our people, and we not out here just showing off. You feel me? How how we let a place like Atlanta bubble before we bubble? Right. For sure. Atlanta ain't blacker than Detroit, and I love Atlanta, and I feel like the stuff that they doing in that, at Atlanta, I admire that. You know, and I, I admire the way that they building, and you know, you know how they building down there, how they you know have a certain level of control, just like Ti, um, for the last election. You know, he helped that situation because he utilized his voice to say, okay, well. This situation ain't right. And he made a change on a local level. In local politics, same thing with that. I don't I don't I'm not trying to veer off too, but that that it, it all ties into together. You know, we politically ignorant. You ask anybody in the city of Detroit if name I can ask anybody, majority of people, if you name all the city council people, I I throw you a hundred dollars right now. I wouldn't know that. I I still have my hundred. For sure. Yeah, you're right. You don't even know who control the money and resources in your hood. Yeah, because you touched on a lot in there. They had a lot to do with a lot of my questions mm -hmm. I was asking as far as, um, you know, where, how far do it, you know, I see you got New Air, Chicago, you feel me? And, you know, in other places. But I seen a video in Chicago and, like you say, the police, man, they just don't respect it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So, like, what like what happened with that situation to where they had, they really running around trying to arrest black people for sticking up for the community, cleaning up the community, you know what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, um, yeah, that was um just something that we had to deal with. That was, that was uh, carefully orchestrated. Um, you know, like I, like I said, man, us doing the work that we do, and, and it's not what you do. You know, I hear a lot of people say, yeah, we do what we do, kind of what y'all do. Yeah. Ain't on the planet do nah, the way hell no nah, I'm nah. be very clear with that because the way that we move and the structure that we move and, and the way that we stick to our organi organization that that day in Chicago so to understand the Chicago situation you got to understand the climate of how we were moving yeah. in Detroit and the way that other people was looking at that and being influenced by that Chicago is our first chapter that we opened up and it's a whole backstory behind that but so us being in Chicago, we were over in the Inglewood area. Anybody who know anything about yeah, Chicago, yeah, yeah. So um, a pretty, a pretty rough, you know, a pretty rough neighborhood. But the police is always feel a level of dominance over there in that community, right? So you got all these white police officers. They always riding around. They, you know, they always showing that. Um, slave catcher, military, you know, that's the type of vibes that, that Chicago uh, give off. Yeah, and, sure. you know, for us, we was out there with our program. So it was our hood to hood program. We go through the community, we clean up, you know, we pass out resources, you know, we was doing our thing, but we was super deep. So, you know, they already had in their mind, they was following us all day. Um, so they already had in their mind that they were going to try to pull something on us. Um, and, you know, try to put something on us. So, you know, that was a whole play from the start. So they followed us, they trailed us. Um, and when we got super deep, they called out like half the force antagonizing us. This was earlier in my years of organizing. So, you know, um, you know, I kind of look back at stuff and I always, I'm my biggest critic. Right. Um, so I see like now understanding you know, some of the tactics and some of the things that, you know, they 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 do and have historically done. Um, and, you know, they just they just went in. You feel me? It was one of those things, man. They it was a big old fallout out there. And, you know, our thing was we had all of these kids and all of these babies. And a lot of people talk about, you know, when you in a, when you are uh, dealing with the police and in, in a, in a hostile situation like that, you know, you could go hella hard and hella. We had a lot of brothers out there. We could go hella in, and they start shooting. Right. And then a kid gets shot and killed. That's on me. I'm done. I put kids in a situation to where, you know, they were in harm's way, and it and it caused a life or something like that. It wasn't that time for us to do all that, but they provoked us into that. They put cases on us. So uh, I think we had uh, five felonies and a few misdemeanors. 
Um, so felonies, you know, like, felonies, like assault on police officers. Oh, they gave man. four of us that. But I ain't seen no no assault yeah, on no was, police officer. The police was, no, was doing right. all the assault. You there, feel? there was no, so they had no yeah. case out there. But what they did was, so these are the tactics: is to wear down, is the resources, the drainage of resources. This is the first thing, the first tactic that they do. So they felt like bet we got them in a whole another state. So you know, when you want to know what they did, they made us drive to every single court date. All of us. So imagine having to organize seven people to go out to Chicago. We tied under the same case. You know, it's it's. It, I got to get these people here, drive there, be on time for the. You know, rent, get the van, be on time, rent, uh, uh, hire seven different lawyers, oh, and man. that rent went on for a year. They made us. They they did that for a year. Um, so it was a huge hit, bro. It was like one. Of, it was a very hard time, man. It was it was very stressful, bro. You feel me? So, um, but it was the greatest. It was a really great learning process, though, because after that, you know, you get to see who real, who around, right, right. who wasn't there no more after that, who is scared, who is spooked, who it may feel a certain type of way, who you know, all of that, bro. Because you say all they want to say. You feel me? That's why a lot of people talk from behind the phones. Oh, I would have, <laughs> right. oh man, y'all did that. I would have. <laughs> You feel me? It's, again. it's yeah. easy to do that, but man, I've been locked up. You know, I I didn't have a a, a record. Anything I've done, you know, that didn't make it. <laughs> it didn't make it. <laughs> but I didn't start getting the records. I started doing this, and you know, it was just like every chance they get, they got. Um, you know, especially in the early stages, they would do that. So my thing was, you know, be a martyr for for this type of work and this type of energy, or put ourselves in a position of where we able to, you know, grow a legacy and be around long term. So, you know, and then I, I looked around, man, we, you know, we was hurting off of that, you know, wasn't nobody around like, man, well, you know, let me help out with y'all court fees. And, right. You know, let me help out with this. You feel yeah, me? Like you can get, lawyers, you, you can do them. all of this for the streets, you know, but when it come down to it, you know, it'd be like, and then I got to see flash money and we, in, we be in the same hoods, you know, probably walking your, your brothers or your sisters to school, you know, probably helping out one of your relatives who on the street or feeding them. And, you know, can do this and go to the strip club and throw all this money, but it can't donate our way. And we be in your hood, the same hoods that, that these rap about. We be in the hoods holding that shit down. Mm -hmm. And it feel like, you know, when Martin Luther King and, and the Civil Rights Movement, the church had his back. You feel me? When Malcolm was doing his thing, the, you know, the um uh the FOI, they had his back. You know, when 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 the Panthers was doing their thing, you know, it was it was the, the black whole black power movement of the people. And I feel like we don't get that same respect in that and that in those regards. It's like it's always wanna hit me with, bro, I love the work you doing, bro. Like keep doing that shit. It's like no nah, right. I'm doing it for us. You feel me? For the for these babies that's growing up in the community can stand on something. And I feel like everybody ain't got to be out here front line with us. But you feel me? You can find a way to help. If it's not, donate what resources you got. Let's build. You feel me? This is about building up us, our people, Detroit, the blackest city in America. Respect, morals, code, ethics. We need to be all of that. We we are that. That's who we come from. Yeah, that's what's up, man. I know you got something else, bro. One more for him. Oh man, I got a few though. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I told you because passionate as fuck about this, shit. it make me want to come front line with that. Shit. You feel me? Like fuck, I'm tired of this shit too, man. I'm tired of niggas talking. I'm tired of thinking they tough, but will go won't fight for. Shit. You feel me? But a go good like the on the news the other day, man. The young dude. The 15 year old. Yeah, come on, yeah, man. man. Come on. And my daughter went to school with the, the guy who passed, the young dog who passed away, you feel me? And he trying to fight, but this man go come up in there and gun him down. In the green light gas station, man. I mean, man, the, the, the young fella went in there and killed the boy, man. Over some internet, it was some some stuff that they, actually the beef happened um, earlier in the school. They had gotten into some sort of fight and then the fight ended up on the internet because this is the that yeah. we never had. This Hell so no. we can't even relate. I feel like, you know, we can't, we have a hard, I know I do. I have a hard time relating to 
how things you know transpire. And I don't say I'm I'm not one to say if it, if all of this was at our disposal back then what it would have been like because this is a it's a cold beast, bro. You feel me? When your mind not developed. You know, our, our all our minds wasn't developed back in the day. How to how we would have been utilizing this, but the kids they just don't they don't have it no more, bro. They can't throw no hands. All they all they know is pulling straps because they can't fight. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't never fought before, and then even when they fight, it's the, so the pride is, is so it's so much yeah. pride there to where so now if like I that. lost, I gotta kill you. Right, right, and and. You know, it, I don't know the the full extent of that situation, but you know, opposed for them, they, I guess they were supposed to meet up to fight, or some happened, uh, you know, whatever the case may be. Um, the guy caught him at the gas station and shot him down. Fifteen years wow. old. Yeah, man, you know the news is damn near like the internet too, because they show they ain't showing it, but they showing it. You mm -hmm. feel me? And I'm just like, wow, this is just what we come to, man. Yeah. It was never in a lifetime where I, we could see, see a fucking dead body. Yeah. See, you know, yeah. it's crazy. I'll be yeah. like, man, what the fuck is this? Like, all down the timeline, it's all, it's, it's the devil, man. Mm -hmm. For real. You save lives. As far as what I've been looking at, what you do from a, for a short period of time, I'm just not getting up on you. And to me, it seems like you're saving lives. Now, with that being said, is there such thing as a lost cause? Have you ran across people who just ain't no saving? Is that a real thing or is everybody can come back to the fold? Brother, yeah. It's a, we got a flu of lost causes out here. It's, and and we got to have we got to have an understanding that that's the case, right? Yeah. It, 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 it has to be the case because of where we at right now. Uh, once again, go back to the blackest city in America, bro. How many lost causes do you have to have for, for us to be down and taking this many L's? You know, for us not to be up. And, you know, and I say a lot of lost cause. My lost cause is somebody who just don't give a fuck. Right. I don't care. I don't give a fuck about nobody else but myself. Why the fuck should I care? I just made, you feel me? I made a a, 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 a hundred million, a hundred thousand, whatever. Why the fuck should I care about anybody else but myself? That's a lost cause. You feel me? It ain't got all necessarily got to be people in bad positions. It can be people with bad mindsets. And there's a lot of that going on. You know, there's more people with bad mindsets than it is in, in bad positions. So, you know, uh, we a lost cause is somebody that, you know, is if you're not if you're not for the movement, you against it. If you're not for progress, you against it. If you're not part of the problem, you know, if you're not a part of the solution, you're part of the problem. So. You know, it's a lot of lost causes out here. And I feel like for us, we don't worry about lost causes. We just got to, you know, we don't worry about the L's on, on the left. You feel me? We just worry about what's on the right and and figure out, you know, how we can utilize people who do have an understanding and people who do want to get involved and who do want to want to help, you know, and hold ourselves accountable. Like I, I tell people all the time, it's just like anything we want to want to do. You know, we gain too much weight. We want to lose weight. So, you know, you're going to have to make space to go to the gym and work out, right? You have to make that space. You know, so it's the same thing. It's like, I, I, I don't understand how somebody can go work for a company, a corporation, a white man, well, the wealthy, rich, white or black. I don't care. Go work for somebody wealthy who don't have to do with your community or nothing that you got going on that you about to go make rich and you give eight to 10 hours a day to that and you you ain't got an hour a day to give towards bettering your hood and your community. The biggest lie you can tell me is I ain't got the time because I know it's a lie. You know, I know it's, it's a lie because we do, we got time to do whatever we want to do. Right. So just say you don't want to do it and cut the bullet. So, you know, as far as a lost cause, yeah, bro, there's, a, there's lost causes everywhere. You probably talked to a few today. Man, for sure. I know I had. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had, for sure. Like, you just, you like, just ain't going to do shit. Huh? You just, just, stay, just hang up and look at the phone like one another conversation. <laughs> man. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I really I wanted to go back to that Chicago shit. So how do you feel about, I mean, I know up down there man and I, I think a lot of these kids now it, all this violence 
that's going on come from that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think it's the rappers and it, you know what I'm saying? They just, man, it's bad in Chicago, man. It's bad. Not only here, it's, it's fucked up here. That's just the first step is to get our city together. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. you know, Chicago need help too, man. Bad. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Our, our Chicago chapter out there doing a damn good job, man. They work front line out there just like we, we here in Detroit. They, they work front line out there just like that. You feel me? We all move on the same accord. We all follow the same black print. You know, right. so, you know, they, they doing the work out there. But, you know, it is. We have to really check the culture. It's like, that's an issue. You know what I mean? So that's why I have a lot of respect for people like, you know, a Nipsey Hussle. You right. know what I mean? Who understood, like, you know, we have to, to respect the culture and, you know, in a way to where, yeah, I'm going to rap about this, but I'm going to show you what, you know, what we really on. You feel right, I me? Mean? I'm going right. to show you what we really doing in the hood. Like, the first thing a, in a position like that to tell you is, oh, man, I do a lot of good, but I don't never show it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I ain't never so much. I be like, so, nigga, you show everything That's else. Right. You done show your watch, your, your chain, how much money you got in your pocket, your car, your house. You feel me? How many plates you got in your cabinet? But you can't show you doing no real. That's because right. you ain't doing it. Once again, don't lie to me. You feel me? You keep it funky. And it's just like, you know, for us, you know, we 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 big on that, man. You know, our people, we got to have an understanding, man, when it comes to, you know, um, uh, the community, man, and, 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 and artists, you know, having an understanding of, of being even connected. You know what right. I mean? With people that's doing something for the streets. That's the thing that get me. It's just like, dog, I look at people weird when you saying that you, you know, that you're doing something for the people or for the streets and you ain't even connected with, you You feel me, to what's going on. You know what I mean? So, my, when it comes to, to a lot of the, the entertainment in the city of Detroit, man, it's just, you know... They just got to do a better job, man, at showing, you know what I mean? Like, I know a lot of these brothers, man, and a lot of these, some of these brothers, a lot of these brothers I've met, and they are good brothers. Right. You know sure. what I mean? They ain't no reckless that's just out here doing a lot of the stuff that they rapping about. And I feel like they, you know, it's, it's they got a lot to give back to the community where they ain't got to, you know, switch up nothing that they doing it's just but it's time to tap in man if you know you got that power and that influence over kids and society i'm only gonna use it to get mm. money right that's it right you can change lives but you can only you only gonna use it to to get money and then ain't all all about the money so yeah, for, that's for a us, big part of us having you on i mean to cut you yeah, off yeah. but that's a big part of us having you on the show because you know we want to show people we don't, you know, we have a lot of rappers on here, but at the same time, y'all need to see something else. You know what I'm saying? Hear the truth. You know what I'm saying? Respect. respect. And you I, know, I, I don't want to cut you off. Bro. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I don't want to cut you off, but I just want to say this, bro. I appreciate that. You feel me? Yeah, I really do, sure. dog. Cause I feel like when it comes to a lot of these podcasts in the city of Detroit, and a lot of people who do podcast work, especially culture podcast work geared geared towards. You know, uh, the culture in the street and the rap industry. You know, it's it's never... We are part of the culture, too. Yeah, Everything yeah, that we do yeah, is a part yeah, of the culture. Yeah. So you even having an understanding that, you know, to, to see that, man, I, I, I appreciate that to put you on your platform. And I want to be on your platform to let people know, like, it's what it is, man. This ain't never been no soft shit. It ain't never been no corny shit. It's all, all about respect. We want to build with people that's, that's trying to build. You know what yeah. I mean? And I feel like... We all should be trying to build, and from that culture is so much power. So you know, let's let's put ourselves at a table to where we able to to do something because we had a power too. You feel me? If all a lot all the rappers came together in the city of Detroit, not all of them, but you know, yeah. if we get a, a nice coalition of rappers, and then you know, really put something in play for codes about killing kids, you know, the, like that, bro. It's just like. If you not don't stand on not killing kids, bro, I don't want to do no, with you sure. anyway. Right. You feel sure. me? I don't give a fuck. If if you you soft, if 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 you ain't if you ain't standing for kids, you soft as fuck. I don't give a fuck what you rapping about. Right. So let's let's be men. You know we been we been real. 
Let's, you know, let's be let's be kings and gods in our communities when we got that ability to be a god. A god is able to a god has followers, right? A god has influence. A god when you have followers, influence and and financial status, you got power. How do you utilize your power, black man? How do you utilize your power, black woman? The same thing. So, you know, we can do a lot of good because these kids, they don't have a lot of these kids don't have to look up to. But what's on what's on the palm of their hand, they right. see it and they want to be it and become it. And that's cool. Like the inner that's entertainment. The, I don't that's entertainment. But reality is what we got to be able to show, you know, as well and make it known. Like, you know, this is this is this is. You know, real life, and these are real issues that we got. I just want to see Detroit beast, bro. Yeah, With everything sure. that's going on, all the success, you know, from music to all of the movies to the comedians, you know, all everything that the pocket, everything that's going on in Detroit is beastie. I just want to see it move the city and the true culture forward through unified or organization. You feel me? And that's just making tables, having seats, checking balances. You know, organized. Shouldn't should no dispensaries be in our city without coming through our people. Right. Ain't no way these these uh, other nationalities should be setting up in, in our city like that when it comes to that. And they on every corner too. Every 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 corner, go, bro. They on every every corner. corner. It don't make no sense, man. Like that's and like you say, they do I mean, be talking kids reckless. Go ahead, go ahead, bro. Yeah, since y'all right on that topic, every corner. Uh, that was one of my questions right there. Um, on a scale of one to ten, you want to rate the power of boycotts. No, that's cool. Okay, the power of boycotts and do you implement them in New Era? Um, you said the power of boycotts. Yeah, on a scale of one to ten, how powerful is it? How powerful of a tool is? It? Go ahead. Um, so. Let's get this straight, bro. It's only really been one true successful boycott in the history of boycott. That's the bus boycott. A, a boycott is something that all of our people, like if one person do it, then it's done. We ain't been that organized since. It ain't been nothing that all of our people said, okay, we not going to do this and be successful. You know, boycotts are only as strong as its participation. So, um, give you an example. So, uh, some years back, we had a big uh, issue out in Dearborn. Um, they had shot um, an unarmed black man and turned around a week later, shot an unarmed black woman. It was just, you know, just no accountability out there. And um, I remember Christmas Day, I believe it was um, 2015, Christmas Day, uh, and we pulled up. At the police department, we was deep as hell. We was about 200 deep. We straight line formation, boom in front of the police department. Um, you know, we 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 did our thing that day. The very next day, we went to Fairlane. Same thing, pulled up in numbers. So we go to Fairlane, right? We super deep outside Fairlane. They got all of they the whole Dearborn Police Department up there. It's around the holiday season, so people shopping, right? So we got a. A, a, a long line stretch with the police sitting out here and it's us right we telling people we not going in the mall today you know that this is what we on yada yada some people turned around said respect right. i'm not going today but you had other people who would not only go in but question what we were doing Black so people. you know it's a clip of mine that's been going around for years when i turn around to tell a gentleman to shut up because he asked us in the middle of a demonstration, why don't we protest, do the same thing that we do right now with on, with black on black crime in front of an all white police force um, for us being out there because they done shot and killed two unarmed black people. So I'm saying all that to say a true boycott in this day and age would never ever work. It's just too much. It's it's just our mindset is too. You know that that cool mindset is 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 very bad, very very bad. So you gonna always have one of you know a group of our people or a portion of our people go against the grain to where they gonna mess it up. You know same stuff. I mean look at all the <laughs> look at all the stuff people say that they boycott. Let's boycott Gucci. Floyd Mayweather come out. Well I don't wear Gucci every day. You feel me? So it's just 
That's that's throne. Yeah, that's blue. Up. You feel me? Let's boycott um, Starbucks. And then, you know, somebody else come. Well, I'm going to get my... I don't care. I'm, I've been getting Starbucks. So it's just like for a true boycott to happen, um, you know, I, I don't think that a boycott in this, in this day and age um, could ever be successful. Uh, but what we have to do is think deeper than a boycott. Uh, so if more of us make not supporting a certain thing a lifestyle, that's just as a, a effective. So um, me, for instance, it, with the Starbucks thing, like I never been back to Starbucks since then. You know, I never shopped at the Gap since then. I never did. You know, I never went back. Like if, if I hear it wrong, and then I was just a part of my culture to not fuck with y'all. But our people don't have that mindset and mentality. But because I'm able to make it a lifestyle, you know, I'm, I'm able to put myself in a position of where, you know, and others who think like that. And if we can get more of our people to think like that and make it a lifestyle, it'll become more uh, effective. But, man, our people, once again, man, it just go back to that mentality of a lot of people just think for themselves right now. They, they don't really care. It's just about the money. It's about the shine. You know, it's about the clicks, the likes, the views, you know. So, um, you know, it's a challenge, man, and doing this work in, in this era of time. It, it really is. Yeah, don't nobody stand no No, mm -hmm. mom was just terrible, man. But that, I was, and then that goes to this question I was going to ask you. How you feel about, uh, you know, people, you know, our people spending their money on businesses, like, you know what I'm saying, to, versus materials, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you got a nice car, this, this, and this, but you don't own it, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even a lot of rappers, famous rappers, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just, that's terrible, man. You say you're doing this, you say you're doing that, but you don't own nothing, bro. What, what, what is you doing for real, for real? Yeah. It's just, that's terrible, man. So how, how you, you know, what's your input on that? Like, what? how could people do better with their bread? You know what I'm saying? You just gotta, you gotta put yourself, people gotta put themselves in an, in an environment, bro, to where people are doing stuff different, you feel me? And it's just, for me, I feel like, do what you want, as far as like, you know, if you want to look good, go make yourself look good. If you want jewelry, get your jewelry, whatever the case may be, but have an understanding, man, that we gotta put ourselves in a, in a position of wealth bill. We gotta have, put ourselves and an understanding to where, you know, we able to not only support black businesses, but build black businesses. I tell people all the time, the number one supporter of black business, uh, 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 the, the number one hire of black people is who? Black businesses. Black businesses are the number one employer of black people. Yes. So, you know, when people be talking about, like you get your mayor to come on TV, talking about he bringing um, this this uh this building project down and it's gonna bring so many jobs. Oh, we building a little Caesars Arena. He sold is in Detroit, so so cold on that. It's gonna bring so many jobs. The whole city be working. It's gonna be great. You feel me? Man, they knew exactly what game they was gonna play. They get all of our people, they get in there and say, Oh, well he can't pass a drug test. The same people down with all these motherfuckers who opening up dispensaries in the hood. So you opening up dispensaries in the hood, allowing all of our people to have they at their disposal, smoking, and they trying to go get a job at little to build Little Caesars Arena. They qualify, but can't pass a drug test. Man. Meanwhile, you hiring all of these white folks from all of these neighboring cities, and they doing the same, but they popping, doing snorting, snorting, and shooting. Well, smoking. <laughs> so it, it's. It's, it's always been a play. We can't believe people when they say that they're going to employ us. That's the key thing. When you see people that want black votes, listen to key words. They don't say We're gonna jobs. Bring jobs. They love jobs. saying it. We don't want to work for y'all no more. We straight, bro. We trying to build. Talk. Say you're going to bring some resources. No some resources. Ain't nobody trying to work in a plant for 40 years like their parents and, 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 and give... You know, 40, 50, 60 hours of my week to somebody. Trade time for money like that. 
That's why, you know, even when you talk about two two parent households and stuff like that, people think that, oh well, you lived in a two parent household, it would be so much better. But your parents work. You feel me? You ain't getting the, the love from your father because your father providing. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, we, we put in a in a position to where we get we've given our lives to the wealth of this country, our lives, first with the free labor and then with with paid labor. Cause that's all it is, plant plantation. You feel me? And they don't give a fuck about you. You can f feel like your head about to explode, or you know, you can die tomorrow. Your job will be posted, you know, the next day. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the same thing. It's, I've right. seen people give years to jobs and they on them. You feel me? And it's just like that's time, man. That's, we can't get back. This is the most precious thing that that we have is time. We look up. You know, we were just talking about back in the day, like. Gone. Yeah, like it ain't never coming back. It ain't, it ain't coming never. Back. I don't give a fuck how rich you is. I don't care how much money Jeff Bezos got. He can't buy his time back. You feel me? So we got to be able to understand that. And understand what that what that means to the growth and development of young black babies, young black men. You feel me? Young black women in our generation. Everybody getting money and leaving the babies to fend for themselves. You ain't teaching because you hustling or, or getting money or doing this or, or or got your life locked up in, in a nine to five. So, you know, I understand that these are things that we have to do, but we also have to be conscious of those things so that we can make better decisions in planning out our future. Because anybody, you know, for the most part that's in a job, I feel like even if you were working to, to get in a higher position, okay, you don't want your own business it ain't everybody own businesses and work for them it ain't they thing but you should be still wanting to climb a ladder or, or you feel me you shouldn't want to just work to work yeah. just yeah, because i'm comfortable with this check that i'm getting it's the check syndrome like once you got it it's gonna it's gonna hold you back from your dreams because it, everything that you say that you want to do everything that you say that 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 you th th you know you believe in yourself but you guys you got to go get that bag because I, I can't put myself in a position to say, well, if this shit start coming in, I'm going to be up and I'm going to get nervous and I'm going to stop believing in myself. You know, we got to believe in ourselves during all times and whatever position that we in, prepare for those things. You know what I mean? So that's all I'm saying. It's just like we 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 bigger than jobs. We bigger than, you know, just uh, throwing out, you know, uh, pennies and crumbs and, you know, not understanding politics. You know, it's, it's very disappointing for us to be the blackest city in America um, and less than 20% of the city come out and vote. Yeah, for sure. Less than 20% of the city. And, and I used to be one of them brothers before I had an understanding of politics and, you know, understanding of resources, how money is, uh, you know, uh, distributed, you know, how it affects everything that has to do with black communities and the games they run from Detroit to uh, the East Coast, the down south um, to the West Coast. And, you know, a lot of these places, they don't have a shot. They gentrify because they their numbers ain't there with their people. You know, there's not their city don't, is, isn't predominantly black. You know, they don't have the numbers to pull off certain things. But less than 20 percent of the people vote on the mayor's race. The mayor of the city of Detroit, the blackest city, you know, this is the only city. This is he runs. The white, the blackest city in America is being ran by a white man from Livonia. The blackest city in America is being ran three terms by a white man from Livonia. Man, the blackest man. city in America. So he's winning in his seats by 70,000 votes. 70,000 votes. It's 600,000 people in this city, bro. 70,000 votes got a mayor in that ain't, that ain't connected to us, ain't fighting for us, ain't fighting for the babies. You ain't never heard this mayor say about no one black kid that done died in the city of Detroit. Maybe he did come out and say, I think I'll take that back because I think he did something recently and I was like, I can't use that bar no more. He did maybe once. <laughs> maybe once or twice. You feel me? But... He, he don't put nothing around these issues. He's not focusing on that. He's focusing on the money. He's focusing on the wealth. He's focusing on 
coming over to places like predominantly black business uh, structures like the uh, the uh, black business development uh, on Livernoise and whitewashing it, you know, building, um, you know, all of these these fake black business districts and, and whitewashing it, um, bike lanes, you know, like we ain't. I don't see, I ain't never seen a black person riding a bike lane, bro. Never. On a bike. Never see our people. But you do see people turn and them know. And they you gonna see. <laughs> because they remember it being a <laughs> lane. We've been here all these years. And uh, this is, because this is a lane. What you doing? Right. You know what I mean? So, it's like, but these are the things that's more important. Like, who the f asked for a bike lane on East Warren and Connor? I don't for think sure. nobody asked for that. Nobody. So, you know, them, them the things, man, when it comes to, uh, you know, politics and all, and all that, we got to just be, you know, conscious of everything that go on. I feel like we all play a role and, you know, whatever we could do to help each other out. But, man, just play a role, man. Stop. My thing is just I just hate when people know what the issue is, like not knowing is one thing. Right. So when we don't understand um, an, an issue, we got to pass. But the day that we understand, the day that we know, the day that we say, ah, damn, it's a problem and do nothing about it, we accountable for that. And we have to hold ourselves accountable for that. And it ain't no excuse to not do something, man. I treat all these kids like they your kids, you feel me? Right, for sure. Like, that's how I feel. You got to. If, 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 if your kid got shot, killed, was in danger, you know, you would want people to step up. You know, and be there for for your babies. You know what I mean? And we just, I treat all kids like they my kids. I've been doing that. And, you know, if more of us start doing that, you know, because I'm, I'm, I'm always go back to the kids, man. Because the kids, women, and elders, they are, they number one. Right. You, you feel me? The responsibility of black women, black kids, and elders is the responsibility of the black man. Period. Yeah, that's how we is, like, where we at. That's how we is over here, like. Don't nobody mess with the older folks over here. Yeah. Don't nobody mess with nobody over here. You feel me? We all protect each other. You know what I'm saying? If something happens, it's gonna get handled. You yeah. know what I'm saying? In the in the le in the legal way though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna get handled. You know what I'm saying? So if people start doing that more, every block, all the communities start holding it down, man. Mm -hmm. Be invisible. Yeah, That's all. Sure. Like just a, a a a little from a lot of people uh, uh go a long way. You feel me? So all we gotta do is just play our role, man. Everybody ain't gotta run. I don't be out here for everybody to run and be a part of New Era Detroit and and do the do the shit that we do. But you know, do what you do in your space, but make it count and organize. You know, you should want to be able to tap in with an organization like ours who do so much in the community. Why would you not? You know what I mean? Like yeah, if, yeah. if I was if I wasn't doing this and I was doing something else and I seen brothers and sisters doing this work, I would tap in with them. I, I just would. I would feel accountable to do that. And, you know, I would want to do that. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. We got to want to reach out. We got to want to be involved with real shit. And, and the where Detroit's real shit. Yeah, I definitely support the movement. You feel me? Off the top. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, we. I, I hit bro to you. You know, to the whole movement. I was Spain. sending them videos like, hey, check this out. Check this out. You know what I'm saying? And bro, he's like... I want to ask him a question, but I don't know if I want to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to ask with the question, bro? No, I mean, it was really based on your happiness, man. And some of the videos I see, uh, you blessing people, man, that you know they didn't have no way to be blessed. And you making that happen, but at the same time, you got a straight face the whole time. You know, so what? So where does your true happiness come from? When we you know with this movement and when you out there like that, man, I be happy, bro. I be happy out there. You know what I mean? Um, when I'm in the community, you know, I I, I definitely always have a, a certain level of poise. But you know, anybody that been out in the hood with me and do our hood to hood programs, man, we have fun. Like we be out every single week. We be deep going to these different hoods. Well, I done been in every hood in the city of Detroit. May not have been on your block, but I've been in your hood. You feel me? I've been around the corner. I done been somewhere around there. And we run our programs, you know, through all of these different communities. So we got the DJ in the back of the U-Haul. So we slapping up the street. 
you know, we passing our resources. We got food. Um, the past few years, we'll fill up a U-Haul full of water guns and, you know, water toys. We pass them out to the kids. We hooping. You know, I, I get my joy in that. You know what I mean? It, it is um, a lot of times, especially when we talking, I'm dealing with serious stuff. You know what I mean? When it comes to when I'm talking about these these kids and the murders of babies and the women being uh, murdered, snatched up and raped. And, you know, we not getting our respect in the community in a way that, you know, politics and, you know, there's a lot of stuff to not smile about. But this doing this work, I get my happiness from it. You know, I get my love from every day to day people. You know what I mean? I, I tell people all the time, like I get real life likes. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people don't know what that is. Or what it feel like, you feel me? But, you know, when I, I step out, I go to a gas station or a liquor store or I'm out to eat or whatever the case may be. You know, we always get love from people in the community like, oh, man, I appreciate y'all. Y'all did this for my folk or, you know, I, I love what y'all did with this. And, you know, oh, we support we sent a little bit over and, you know, just keep going, brother. You know, you, well, the, the love that we get from the babies when we be inside these schools, you feel me? They treat us we get rapper treatment in the schools <laughs> you know what I mean? like the kids man they 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 love us and they they respect you know the, the the way that we move and how we hold it down for them you know and how we so relatable you feel me like it and, and that's another reason i wanted to do this it's like i ain't you know i'm not ain't nothing square about this bro i'm not i'm from detroit man i represent for us you know i, I go to all of these different cities and i'm I'm Detroit, you feel me? I always got a D hat on, you feel me? I always move in a certain type of way. You know, I had the sticks on before I started doing the black ons. And that's another thing, supporting our own people. These, so where you get them these from? These Justin Lamones. Um, uh, great, great company, man. They make great quality. Um, the the, uh, the frames is quality. Uh, the sticks is quality. Um, and I always tell people, I feel like people from Detroit, you know, we, we fall in love not so much with the name Cardi, but the style, like the frameless, the frameless style. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, for them to kind of duplicate a similar vibe, um, you know, and it's black owned, I support that. I sold yeah, mine immediately. I'm, I'm, uh, and I jumped. I'm I looking jumped. at I've been looking at them like, damn, man, I ain't. No, nah, no, nah, but, but people always but think so. Always so say you that feel me? Yeah, people yeah, always yeah, think, you know, I live this black, bro. My yeah, glasses yeah. black owned, my watch Italian twine, you feel me? You know, I get majority of all my clothes from. Um, black owned um, you know clothing stores and you know I got an 80-20 rule where I like to spend 80% of my dollars every single day with my people and right. the 20 is what it is I'm gonna right. go to the gas station I'm gonna go you know to to certain places I might go to you know somewhere out to the movie or whatever but um, you know we gotta really live it it gotta be a lifestyle it can't just be no okay today we're gonna support black businesses that we gonna support black businesses every day and we gonna make it a lifestyle and we yeah. gonna put our people on it it's just so much to life man it's so much to life and then now we live in a technology age to where it's so many it ain't never been this many ways to get money it ain't never been this many ways to you know many different lifestyles in which you can be involved in legally you feel me it, it, all, it used to feel like we couldn't do shit but go to a plant or a hustle but now the hustles are so legit to where you know man it, it's it's endless and we just want to free up time i be telling my brothers and my sisters that man the goal should always be for us to put ourselves in a position that we not trading time for money and and you know be able to free up time we're gonna always hustle we're gonna always grind but you know don't don't take for granted those times that you spend with your kids you know when you first have babies at a young age right, right. you know you know spend those 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 first you know, three to four years is important. You know what I mean? Like, you're spending time with, with our kids and just in every age, you know, um, and family too, bro, and being able to see the world, make sure that you get putting travel dates in, in your schedule. You know what I mean? Don't just get sucked into, you know, the normalcy of life because that's what's sold. That's what's always been sold. That's the first thing that when we go, you go to school, Go to school, go to school to get a job. That's right. it. If you you'll be a lie, you told me that that your people ain't tell you that. Go right. to school, man. Go to school. Go to school to get a job, and that was it. Well, you know, I, I watched. You know, all my life, all I seen was my granddad work. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Then he retired, but he also had other things he was doing. You feel me? Yeah. But he was working. Yeah. And I was looking like, 
man, growing up, like, man, I, you know, if I would have started working back then, I feel like I would have, I'd be done with working. You feel me? I'm 37 now, yeah. so I feel like, man, that work. I started working for real, for real, uh, like three, four years ago. Yeah. You feel me? Right, right. So I'm like, I wish I would have did this earlier in my life. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause, but at this point, we trying to build, man. We, sure. we not. I'm tired of working. I had to tell my boss, I say, I, I had to tell him, like, listen, I say, man, I'm a boss, man, for real, for real, I'm a boss. You know what I'm saying? I run my own program. I, You know, I can respect you, but you're going to have to respect me and know that I come here to get do what I'm going to do, and, I, and I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Don't come to me telling me nothing, you know what I'm saying, about nothing. You feel me? Period. So, yeah, man. Yeah, like, I need that let me vent real quick. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he said, man, you mind about some <laughs> 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 That job it had me, man. Yeah, no. So much flashed in my head. I say, oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah, that job, man, I feel like our people could do much better, man. But during this COVID season, like you said, a lot of people did yeah. get on top of that and start mm -hmm. coming up with, you know. Yeah. You know, even... You know, we came up with a, a brand, you know, it was just our logo, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it was something that we put on, we put on t-shirts, sweatsuits, whatever, hats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And we got love, but you know, some some people love you, some people hate you, oh, man. That's a part of the plan. That's life. Yeah, man. <laughs> it kind of discouraged me. I'm like, you know what, man? I ain't showing us no love, man. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? What, what do uh, New, New Era Detroit got towards the future? What, what's the future plan in like? To what's the next level? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So next level, man, it's just uh, so we have our own. Uh, we have our own uh, black print, which we call it. So you know, with our black print uh, of community organization, I always tell people that you know it's thousands upon thousands of uh, black organizations um, out there. But you know, until we came around, nobody could ever define what organization looks like in black communities. Right, so you would hear of all of these black organizations. Oh, my organization, but what does organization look like in black communities? Organization, organized, that's a big word. It's a powerful word. It's a very, organization is one of the most active words, you know, in vocabulary. So to have an organization and to be organized, you got to be consistent. It got to be a level of, of power and effectiveness behind that. Um, and, and we have to be able to, to see it. Hey, you have to have something to show for that. And, you know, if our community is getting worse, you know what I mean? Like, and, and, and it's no code, then, you know, we can't say that, that we organize them, man. And we, you know, putting ourselves in a position to win. So for us, we just want to put ourselves uh, in a position to win, you know, uh, grow our programs. Um, you know, we got... Uh, plenty of uh, national safety initiatives that we coming out um, we got a lot of stuff that I, I really can't talk about right now but right. we coming out with a, a huge safety app that's going to change the game um, when it comes to you know the safety of women and um, kids so we working on that um, we also are, are, are really heavily working on conflict resolution so that's big with us now um and building resolution centers, not um, the first of its kind, will be built here in the city of Detroit. Um, and we want to be able to place them all around uh, the country too, as well, because uh, the basis of everything uh, that goes wrong, for the most part, in our community is because the you know of poor conflict resolution um, skills. You know, the ability to not be able to resolve conflicts is one of the key factors, and you know, deaths, um, one of the key factors to us not being able to to grow, um, you know, as a people um, in all ages, from kids in schools to adults. Um, we, we don't, we have to be able to, to resolve conflict better in order to grow as people. Um, and I feel like everything that we do fall up under that. So we working on an actual conflict resolution center, um, as well as perfecting a program um, and just making sure that we uh, are implementing a consistent code for organizing uh, in our community. So um, day to day, like we big on making sure that, you know, before I came here, I done had um, uh, three or four conference calls, you know, from talking to people here in Detroit about our programs and chapters, of, you know, in different cities. But, you know, we talking every day. 
we working every day. You know, programs are being run weekly, um, and we all mirror them off of each other. And um, for us is to be able to provide a platform to def to truly define what organization look like in black communities worldwide, not only here city, here right. in, in, in the States, but, you know, before COVID, um, and we still are working with brothers and sisters in Nigeria, um, and also in the UK, in the UK, I was on my way to fly out to the UK um, that year to, to build a chapter out there too as well. So um, people look at what we do um, and people who have the heart to organize and, and want for our people, they look at it and they want to be involved and they want to figure out how, uh, you know, how they can implement some of the things that we're doing in the communities that they live in. So just be a catalyst in that, you know, be able to um, get to a, a, a level to where we able to affect change politically uh, as well, utilizing our powers to affect and change some of these laws. Um, you know, we we have to be able to organize that power too uh, as well, especially when we talk about uh, the criminal justice system and you know, um, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the family of the court, you know, right, um, for sure. it's a lot of things that need to be adjusted, you know what I mean? Um, systematically, uh, in our communities, but, you know, being able to affect that change, you know, it's powering people. I tell people all the time, I take a hundred people, a, a, a million people over a million dollars every sure. single day. Okay. You feel me? Because there's more power. And the, and the people than it ever could be in, in that uh, million dollars worth of currency. So, um, you know, it's just getting the people in our community to understand power, um, how to utilize it, um, and how to organize that power. And that's what's up. Yeah, that, <laughs> you know, with that, FO, that FOC, man, <laughs> that tears up a lot of families, bro. Yeah, yeah, we, have, we had a um, huge conversation about that um, at our last brother bill when we was building um, and that's something too, man. Um, we working on different ways to build with brothers, man. Like, uh, so I'm all, I've always been a big critic, and people that see me every year after year get on brothers. Brothers, where y'all at? Y'all here to blase, blase. So I come high energy because you know I feel like we do have accountability. But you know, this year and in the next couple of years, I really want to just put us in a space so we can talk about some of the things that we deal with and some of the issues. What's holding us back from getting involved? And what are some of the things that we deal with in our day-to-day -day lives, um, you know, that black men deal with? Man, we the most uh, attack uh, uh, a body of people next to the black woman. But, you know, the black man still, you know, we get it. We get it, and we get it hard. So, and have been, you know, for years and years to come. I mean, in the past. So, putting ourselves in a the, in the position, I just want to have a better understanding of why we can, I can get in the front of the camera and say that they shot up a 81 year old woman house and put over 100 bullets in that. Get all the G's, everybody, and nobody come out. Yeah, that's terrible. But 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 the people that that, that rock with us, you feel me? I want to know why. What's holding us back? Like, what's not going? If that don't make you mad, if a kid, you know, senseless, a kid being shot in a drive by. Don't make you mad. You know what I mean? Little baby riding in the car, getting shot on his way to a party. Don't make you mad. Like, you know, I want to know. So, man, I'm not going off. You feel me? Like, I, I don't want to because people will be look at me like, damn, he got aggressive approach. But I be mad as f You feel me? Yeah, I be mad. Yeah, I feel you. This is real life for me. And you if you me? don't get mad, it, then it's something wrong. It with is. It's show. something wrong you know with you. Saying? So, I don't apologize for you know, for my aggression, but I, I do want to try a different approach and just asking my brothers, like, what the fuck is it that's holding us back? Like, let's have an a, a honest conversation about that. But, you know, um, you know, I don't know. I may have got sidetracked. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> I, mean, I know we were talking about the family. Yeah, we were talking uh, about, family, uh, we were uh, talking about uh, the court system. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah man, we got problems, man. It's, it's You know, that's been utilized to... to once that has been put into place, it's destroying more black families than anybody. You know, anything or any entity that has destroyed more black families, you know, the government, uh, a way of running, you know, our families just has always been to put us at a disparity and take the, the, the man out of the household. So it's sure. always the sure. system, you know, whether black women understand it or not, has always been the, the 
you know, designed to do that. And I feel like we just need to work on better ways. Um, and I'm not saying that to take away accountability. Like, niggas should be taking care of their kids flat. You know what I mean? If you're not taking care of your kid, you're a sucker. But those fathers that's out there that's, that's you know, wanting to take care of their kids, trying to take care of their kids, and it's being denied by the court. Like, who the fuck is you? This is my, this, this baby came out of my. You feel me? So, you know, I, I feel like there's not enough that goes, um, um, you know, not enough energy behind that. And, you know, the number one reason because it happens to predominantly black men. So society can give a f less, you know, about that issue. But, brothers, that's another thing that we should be coming together and organizing that. And that goes hand in hand with the with dispensaries to me. This has been the strangest shit. It's just like, if we can't organize off of, I know that we can sit in a room full of brothers and they gonna have an issue with the, with, 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 uh, with the family. Yeah, yeah, FOC. And I know that we can be in a room full of brothers and, you know, they, they done either, you know, been involved with selling, you know, or got something on their record for smoking, got in possession or whatever. And it's just like, they making that legal and, you know, they, they continue to do what they do. Um, at the FOC, so you know, um, once again, I don't know what's gonna move brothers. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. It's just like, if it be simple stuff to where, like, if that don't move, you don't want to do more, man, and get involved and put your foot down. I don't know, but it's that that's our culture and just people so caught up in other stuff. Um, you know, in the big in the big picture, is really wounding us, and it's gonna continue to wound the, the next generation. Yeah, we're going to try to wake them up, though. That's why I say, again, we got you on the platform mm -hmm. so we can wake that ass up. You know, we got some some ignorant people that watch us, you know what I'm saying, that don't know better, you feel me? Yeah. And hope, hopefully we catch a few people that open their ass up, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're trying to build, though, you feel me? It's just like, and I say all this because we trying to build with our brothers, you know what I mean? It's not... I don't say this to attack our brothers, but I just really, you know, I believe in us to the point to where I know that we can do it if we organize, come together, unify, and get our shit together. I know we can do it. That's that's what irritates me so much because I believe in us, and I know we can do it, and we have the ability and the power to do so. We just got to tap in. Tap in with that like we tap in with everything else, and we're going to be able to see the change that we want to see in our communities and gain the power that we need and deserve, you know, um, from the infrastructure, you know, and dealing with our community. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, so crack. Well, how you feel about this, bro? <laughs> man, this is my. Go ahead. You can tell me real heavy, man. Yeah, man, it's magnificent, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, 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 it's a learning process, but at the same time, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the like the edge of the front lines right here. A lot of people, man, do what he do at home. You know what I'm saying? They on the internet with all the shit he talking about, but he actually out in the grease, and that's the yeah, difference. That's, you know, you can't do nothing but respect that. Bro. That's another respect reason why I say he fit for this because he be in the trenches for real. You feel me? Yeah. I yeah. see him in the streets more than I see these niggas rapping on songs talking about what they doing. You feel me? In dangerous neighborhoods, though. You feel me? Not ain't no sunshine and. People dancing around, you know what I'm saying? It's dangerous around here, man. I'm like, cuz putting his life on the line for real, for the people, man. And if people understand that, man, well, you know, it'll get better, man. It's a process, man. Yeah. We, still, we, still, we still wait. Now, I do got a final, man. I do got a final question for you. Um, we did talk about a lot of bad, cuz it's a lot of bad out there. It's a lot of bad to be fighting against, which makes you, in my opinion, good. So, what improvements or results have you seen, you know, you know, with your own eyes since you started the movements? What, what's good that's kind of came out of it that you could tell the people about? Um, so I always say um, culture wise uh, in the city of Detroit, um, we don't deal with a lot of things now, uh, especially the first thing that I feel uh, culture has changed when we talk about the gas stations and liquor stores. Um, I believe us coming out and shutting down so many of them originally, uh, you know, played a huge role in, in the way that, you know, a lot of them move now. Um, and it's not perfect. You're going to still get gas station incidents and liquor store incidents, but it was a huge culture uh, when we first started. Um, and we really opened people's eyes up here in the city of Detroit to, 
you know, have an understanding of the respect that we, you know, uh, uh, deserve when it comes to uh, our establishment. And if, if we didn't do that for everyday regular people, <laughs> the people that run these businesses, they got it enough to say, okay, well, I'm not going to let that affect my money, so I got to watch how I treat, you know, uh, people in, in, in this community, in this neighborhood. Um, you know, and also just... You know, the culture politically, too, you know, people don't really uh, understand uh, that we've been able to affect and change um, the pressure that we put on the establishment um, and demanding respect in certain things uh, out our, on, a, you know, in our community, the respect that we demand from, you know, uh, downtown and City Hall and, um, and you know, within uh, DPD, too, as well. You know, um, it's a certain level of respect that you know, they have for uh, us and the culture and how they treat our people because they don't want to hear from us. Nobody want to hear from us when it comes to not being able to, to um, you know, do our people in the right format. So a level of accountability, you know, that's in place right now that people don't understand that we have here in Detroit that a lot of other cities don't have because um, of, of the work that we do and, you know, the kids that we see um, who have an understanding of so much of the stuff that I talk about now when we go to these classrooms, you know, the kids that we've been able to mentor um, and put on to so many different things, um, a different visual, uh, with the way that we come down the streets and come down the block, you know, people say uh, from all ages, you know, I've never seen nothing like this, you know, come down my hood. The kids, you should see them, they be in complete bliss. They just can't understand what is happening. You know, when they see all of these brothers and sisters come down and we got a U-Haul full of groceries and, you know, a U-Haul with a whole DJ in the back and, you know, we, we passing out toys, but we organizing, so we passing out resources, we getting people involved, um, you know, the engage, the community engagement, uh, that culture, you know, we've been able to, to help and change and also, um, you know, just defining what organization look like uh, once again in our community you know um before then yeah we'll see a bunch of organizations we'll hear about them but you know um it'll be on a reactionary front most of the time that you hear about some of these organizations after something happened like after a kid gets shot or after something happened you will hear about somebody you see about somebody and it's just the the proactive approach of 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 our organization and being able to be in people face year around um you know and not just after something happened or you know uh when it, when when the news cameras are around and things of that nature so um i feel like more people will understand later like i'm one of them brothers that people are gonna look at you know 10 20 years from now and be like dang you know, uh, New Era Detroit, they really did, you know, they really did their thing in this era. I almost feel like people in Detroit kind of, you know, spoiled <laughs> at some time, you know, because this is like the, what they expect from us, you know, and and when things happen, it's just, you know, I, I feel like that people will really have a true understanding and appreciation for us once they, um, you know, our whole story get out and all the things that we've been able to do and accomplish. Uh, I'm working on a book right now. Um, you know, we when we pushing our 10 year uh, anniversary. So you know, we we looking at a documentary too because I believe if people really seen us, and that's another thing. Like we've been able to record our whole entire journey. So we got tricks on top of tricks of footage. Every shutdown, every uh, program, everything we've ever done is all documented. So you know, it's gonna really be dope when people actually get a real understanding because we don't I don't get the opportunity to come on a lot of podcasts and because I don't know what people think like you know the, the people that's too square think that I'm too rough and the people that's too rough <laughs> they think like well I don't know what you know what I mean they think I'm too square like oh he ain't gonna come he ain't gonna be able to you know be fun or be relatable and I'm from the culture I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is and we can talk about you know the Pistons and the rest of that too and you know what music we live I, all that too but you know for us it's, it's just I, the thing I like about myself and I appreciate about me is that you know I never have to sugarcoat myself the way that I am right now talking to y'all I'm gonna talk like this in the boardroom I'm gonna talk like this in the streets um I, I get a lot of flack from the 
the you know people in the community because I cuss a lot. So when I be out in the community, oh why you cuss so much? And, you know, cause I'm on East Seven Mile. Right. This is what they understand. Like right, right. I'm talking to my people. I'm not you know in the bourgeoisie state. You know we talking the language of the culture and. You know, and I say what's on my mind, and I never hold back stuff, but I'm who I am. Like, this is the same person, you know, uh, all the time, and I, I, I appreciate that about me, um, you know, and being able to even be out here, man. So, you know, that's something I always stand on, and I ain't never sold out. I ain't never folded, you know, and I ain't never quit on my people. I started this organization uh, August 17th, 2014, and I've been working ever since in the hoods, and, and hoods all across the country, you know, I got a family, I got, I got to uh, be able to eat, I got to grind, I got businesses, you know, you know, I have that go on inside of my life, but I never, you know, I never stopped working, you know, for the people, um, and I never made excuse for it, you feel me, and I feel like, you know, anybody who's standing on that type of shit, you know, that's, that's real for me, man, like, yeah. being able to do something for other people that's bigger than yourself, you know, and not want nothing back from it. Like, there's nothing nobody could ever do to repay me for all the work that I put in this community. It's, it, it doesn't have a price tag on it. Man, nobody got enough money for all the energy, love, time, you know, and passion that I put out here in the street. So, you know, for, for me, it's just being able to, to understand what we're doing and building a legacy um, and passing down something that'll be able to, you know, withstand the test of time. And that's, that's, what, that's what I'm on. That's what our movement on I always like to shout out to to my whole team bro because it ain't never a Zeke thing right. you know it's people that don't even know my name but know New Era like oh yeah most people right. New Era you feel me because like it ain't Zeke it's like a New Era and I appreciate that man because it's, it's about the it's about the movement it's about the work it ain't about me you feel me I ain't, I, I ain't no singular name person this ain't no singular job you feel me it's the, the team I got a fantastic team of people all across the country to handle their mother business and uh, you know in the right way and we building from that it's a process um but we trusting in it um and and we are definitely making our uh, strides and uh being effective um, but you know it's just a process hey bro he and just answered way. like three questions that i was gonna ask and you feel me <laughs> all at once i'm sitting there like i ain't even gotta ask that i ain't gotta ask that either you feel me <laughs> I'm going to say this because I got one, man. Um, on the last episode, we had a, a local superstar, Danny Always Win, and he spoke highly of you. Yeah, and then I see you on the video. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I yeah. see you on the video, man, uh, you know, doing your thing, showing love with Bezo, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So with that being said, man, is any of these athletes or other rappers or these stars kind of reaching into the movement for you? Are they reaching out? Do they, do they see what you're doing? Um, few, bro. I'm keep it funky, you know what I mean? Few, very few, you know, I got a great connection with very few great people, bro. Um, but they good, they great people, you know, the, the connection. I always feel like, you know, it, it could be more, you know what I mean? I, I definitely feel like that. Um, you know, when you got big, like mega rappers come back to the city of Detroit and be more interested to, to work with like Dan Gilbert and you know, build with the establishment and, and, and not, you know, look to build relationships with, um, you know, people who really be in the trenches, man. Um, so, you know, for the people who, who who mess with us, I just appreciate it. You know what I mean? I just appreciate anybody who reach out. For real, bro. That, that, that be meaning a lot. But, you know, some of these rappers, bro, they know exactly who he is. They don't show no love. You know, ain't never tried to, um, you know, uh, build no relationship, um, you know, and I, I don't look for all of that, but, you know, I just appreciate the people that do, so I don't really pay too too much attention to uh, who don't, but, you know, it, it, it's always dope, because like I said, we be in everybody hood, you feel me? So, you know, and seeing that uh, and building, you know, I, it, it, it's always dope when, you know, other rappers are able to tap into that, you know, and big shout out to, you know, the homie Trick, um, mm -hmm. that's somebody with us from, you know, the jump, you know what I mean? And he's, you know, always, um, had open arms for us, man. And just always been a real dope influence, um, you know, in, in, in the movement. Um, I have a great relationship with Big Hurt. Um, that's my, that's my G, 
Um, you know, and you know, really with the OG rappers, man. You yeah, know what I mean. Shout sure. out to Vez, man. Vez, I've been rocking with Vez. He, you know, since before he went in and did his time, and um, you know, I I want to make sure that um, in those tough times, man, that we supported. You know, we showed the establishment, like you know, this brother. You know, he 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 got a connection to the people. He he got a good heart, man. You feel yeah, me? I ain't gonna sure. lie. You know, Vez got a real good heart, bro, and he really care about his people. So it's easy for us to build. You know what I mean? Some people don't really give a f about the people or the streets for real, man. And you know, we find we have no connection, but you know, the people that do and really know and really connected in with. You know what's going on on this side, man. Um, they reach out, and I appreciate them for it. So, you know, I'm hoping that other other rappers and artists who don't know, you know, will see this and you know tap into that too as well. So, I got one for you, one more, man. So, what holds the most weight? Fear, love, or loyalty? Well, today most. is how we live today. You know what I'm saying? Um. I think love holds the most weight. Um, and the reason that I say love holds the most weight, um, and I'm not saying it that it's in a great way, um, love holds the most weight because I feel like everybody looking and trying to get love. You feel me? I feel like love is trying to get love um, and not the real love. Um, when I say love, I just equate it to, you know, the like process, the views, the, right. you know, the attention. You know, that holds the most weight. They don't give a fuck about how loyal you are. They don't give a fuck about how much of a respected individual you are. It's just that the love and the likes. And um, that's really why, you know, in this time, in this era, everything's so fucked up because everybody looking for love in all the wrong places and all the wrong type of love and energy is taking over and dominating. You know, people love, love to, the first thing a lot of people do is wake up and they going right on the ground, you feel me? Brush his teeth for nothing. You know what I mean? You ain't even took your one for nothing because you jump right on the ground. And it's just because that you love, you know, you 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 are infatuated with, with the love that you get from people that you don't even know, people that don't give a fuck about you. And, you know, because we in a culture that's built on that right now, you know, respect don't hold as much weight as it should. Right. You know, loyalty, which is the most important thing, which should hold, you know, most of the weight, you know, don't get the respect that it that it should. And, and real love, true love, don't get the respect that it should because, you know, you got all this fake love and fake energy and simulated, you know, on these phones. So I feel like in this era, um, the fortunate thing, um, I feel like all this, the fake love holds the most weight because everybody chasing it. Everybody want to get all the views. You want to be the person with the most views. You want to be the person with the most likes. And, you know, that that's artificial. And that that's running the world right now. So, you know, why, why would you care about respect or loyalty when when that's when that's head of, of, of what's, what's being pushed on? Yeah, I think that's the best answer that we got from anybody we asked that to. <laughs> that was nice. You always get a different answer. Every it's time, you feel me? That, that was nice. Yeah, yeah man. Respect. It was the realest one, you feel me? Yeah, I mean, it's the I truth, feel. you know what I'm saying? Everybody's searching for love in the wrong places. Yeah, it's just like, Ain't nobody got no respect or loyalty, you know, towards the next man or, or woman, you mm -hmm. feel me? Not even the kids, you mm -hmm. feel me? Mm -hmm. Those things are out the window, because you just want to be, people want to be the coolest. Everybody want to be the coolest. Everybody want to have the, the biggest bag. You feel me? Everybody want to have, you know, the most influence. Um, so, you know, it's just, that, that's like a cloud, you know, blocking the sun, which is loyalty and respect. So I want to ask you, uh, is it any way, like, we could sponsor, you know, the movement, like, run a little, you know, like a mind or something, let these mother we going to keep it in their face, you yeah, feel me, yeah, we at all always, times, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can always build, bro. I feel like it's um, it's a lot of stuff that we'll be able to do, yeah, you man. know, in the future, man. Um, You know, 110%, you know what 
you know, like I said, I just appreciate y'all for having me, man. Cause, oh, yeah, man, I um, appreciate it. I'm telling you, bro. you, bro. I'm telling you, dog. The first interview I get on CNN on The Breakfast Club, you can tell the rest of these <laughs> that do podcasts to kick rocks. <laughs> no, <laughs> none of you. <laughs> I'm coming right back to cousin, and we're going to be in the basement. <laughs> right, right. You, you feel, feel me? Feel like, I, I, yeah, man, I, I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, I just feel like you fit it, man. You fit the whole platform. You know what I'm saying? It ain't just for rappers. It's for... It's for the people, culture. yeah, you know, people, black, black businesses, you know what I'm saying, yeah. all that, you know, got to be, be no rapper to come up here. It could be a lady, you know, she got, she do hair, she do nails, or, you know, anything, you know what I'm saying. As long as a black person trying to prosper in life, I feel like we right here for them, you know, to push, to push it, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's. But I respect. appreciate, I for sure appreciate you, cause you know, you ain't had to come over here, you know what I mean. Man, you know, sure, man. I pull, I pull up. You feel me? Yeah. That, that ain't nothing, man. Like, yeah, the pull up game was on point, man. Yeah. I, <laughs> That's I was telling you, like, I'm outside. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I'm familiar. I'm familiar with the area, bro. Yeah, because I have seen you in this area, mm -hmm. and it might have been on on the news. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Something happened, and I was like, right around the corner. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. So, yeah, you definitely be in the trenches for sure. Yeah, no, that's love, bro. Respect. Oh. All right, well, yeah, we about to end the show. You know what I'm saying? That's our time for the night. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for our guests for showing through, you know, popping up like he did. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we taught y'all something tonight. Put something on that brain. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, man. I appreciate y'all brothers for having me out. You already know what it is, Zeke, with the movement. If it ain't moving, it ain't no movement. And you already know if we moving, we going to be in the trenches with it. So all for power sure. to the people. You feel me? I'm a B-R-E-A-D-B-R-O-V-A-Z If you wanna see me, then I'll be in the D Oh, should I say three or three?